Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Oh, wouldn't you know? That's amazing. Now I just lost my, uh, I, Christelle has stepped on the power cord for the internet. So the only one that's going to now be able to be posted at all is, in fact, the high def. So high def people, welcome to the correct views. We're going to get right into the news today. If you wonder why I'm sitting here in a rocking chair, it's because mere moments before we were supposed to go live, everything in the studio decided to go black. We had no lights, we had no nothing. Christelle has fixed it, and in doing so, has disconnected the internet. So now, it is only the high-def people that are seeing the show. Friends, this has been a very difficult day. I swear, the powers that be have been out to uh, stifle the correct views today. But we're going to go on. Guys, we got the feminism update, or as Al Rushmore likes to say, feminazis. If you notice the lights uh, triggering off and on behind me, it's because Christelle is uh, realigning all the lighting for the studio in order for us to be able to do the show, since we somehow have had total blackness in our studio. Uh, Daily Caller, social justice puritans convince artists to pull Batgirl comic book cover. <coughs> Friends, hopefully I won't unplug the computer. Look at this. So there's absolutely nothing offensive in any way about that, unless, of course, you're an idiot. If you're an idiot, then you think that the Joker is real. <laughs> now, somehow, I, if I'm not mistaken here, correct me if I am, Batman has been around for at least three, possibly, depending on how you figure it, four generations. But now, third wave feminism has the answer. And then somehow that shut down Batman. Uh, thank you, Christelle. Um, look in front, make sure I'm centered, otherwise perfect. Thank you. Another day, another ridiculous controversy generated by feminists in the social justice crowd. This time, it's a Batgirl comic book cover that has the perpetually offended flocking to social media to register their disgust. The cover, part of the variant series promoted by DC, was created by awesome, I might add, artist Ralphio Albuquerque and features the Joker holding a terrified Batgirl at gunpoint. <gasps> oh my god, it's a guy hurting a girl. The Joker wearing his signature purple and green livery and demonic grin draws a smile across Batgirl's face using blood as ink. Oh, yeah, you know, can't be any blood. The bloody smile is the form of calling card for the cartoon character. Obviously, we know this. So, now we have the feminazis. Sieg Heil! We have the feminazis out here having, like, a meltdown over Batman. Over Batman. We have yellow on the uh, line there, Christophe. Batman, literally, oh, having... Having some kind of an issue. This is where modern feminism is. So what happens when a, a, a free-minded, wonderful feminist takes the microphone? Well, how about this? Kit Daniels. Rapper Azalea Banks says, quote, I hate white Americans. Now, we've already covered on this show that... Uh, the last edition, actually, the, the dumb of the day, went to the belief, the common core belief that there is no such thing as reverse prejudice or reverse racism, I should say. Well, this dolt, Azalea Banks, came up with some of the stupidest comments ever. And if I have anyone listening to this that says, well, that's black people for you. No, that's not black people for you. I have black people very close to me. I have uh, I have the black people. All, I mean, look at my zip code. I'm in 44703. That's all you need to know. Black people don't think this way either. They don't. I'm serious. There's no, there's no black person I know sitting at home saying, oh, my God, I hate white Americans. I don't know any white people really sitting around thinking about how much they hate black people. It, it, it doesn't normally happen. This isn't what a black woman says. This, I don't care, feminists, is what an idiot says. 
Rapper Azalea Banks hate, hates white Americans and everything about the U.S. Yeah, because, you know what, you should worship us. Because the United States has the only people in it that are brain dead and otherwise stupid enough to think that you have any musical talent whatsoever. Literally. I've never seen anything as distasteful as this woman. Christelle, I'm not getting a mic count on this, so I hope I'm getting a volume on this. Otherwise, I don't know if I have any uh, volume. I don't have any sound. All the people who are crunched into the middle of America, the real fat and meat of America, are these racist, conservative white people who live on their farms. I hate everything about this country. I hate fat white Americans. Well, let me ask you something. Wouldn't it be the fat white Americans, farmers, that have fed you throughout your whole life? If it wasn't for them, these farmers that you hate the food wouldn't grow. Also, are you dumb enough to think that there are no black farmers? Because, I, let, me, let me let you know, black people can farm. No, they can. It's true. If that's not already on, that's going to be all but useless. It says those little teenage girls who work at Kmart and have their racist grandmothers, that's really America, she added. What does that even mean? Does anybody listening to this have a racist grandmother? It's like all of her beliefs are firmly rooted in midair. How many of you know what that means? Those little teenage girls who work at Wall Kmart with a racist grandma. Well, that's the most boneheaded comment I've ever seen. Isn't it blatantly racist to say that you hate white people? Banks also claimed that racism motivates her critics and that she's owned repar she's owed reparations. Never mind that she's made an entire fortune with having no talent whatsoever, which she could only do in a country as stupid as ours. She can't sing, she can't write music, she can't rap, she sucks. That's not my opinion, it's fact. She said, it's always about race. New Zealand singer Lord can run her mouth and talk, quote, shit about all of these bitches, but y'all aren't saying she's angry. I don't know that anybody has said she wasn't angry. I have always assumed that Lords was angry. And you know what? I've always assumed that she was angry for good reason. Because idiots like you exist and poison the minds of other eyes, non-racist and happy people. Uh, guys, the last of our Femme Nazi Sega Heil update, Daily Caller, Alleged threats of violence and vandalism by feminists cause black pussy to cancel the concert. The bands of supposed racist and sexist, that's their name, oh their name is racist and sexist, never mind that Jay-Z drops the word bitches more than anybody in all of musical history, and he goes before his brother, his words, not mine, Obama, on a regular basis. Here we go with feminists worrying about the name Black Pussy. A band with the supposed racist and sexist name has allegedly been the target of serious threats of violence and vandalism by feminists, and then have caused the band to cancel an upcoming concert. Pause. I thought it was men that were overpowering and raping women. Women, mind you, were not able to defend themselves. You shouldn't own a gun if you're a woman because that means that you have accepted your fate among men. So we're going to go ahead here, Christelle, we're going to go ahead here and assume that you're defenseless, but you can promote so much violence that the band shuts their show down. I think something's burning by the light. Outraged over the all-white male band named Black Pussy, feminists launched a petition attempting to coerce the band into changing its name. 
According to the petition, if the band did not change its name and issue an apology for being racist and sexist, then there would be a boycott of the values that booked the band's tour. The band claims the name was inspired by the Rolling Stones song Brown Sugar, which was originally entitled Black Pussy. That, in fact, is history. It is true. Record labels reportedly deemed the song title too controversial, but Black Pussy thought the name was a perfect fit for the band. The name, it goes on, encapsulates exactly what the band is. A sex-charged, 70s-influenced, hide-your-daughters-because-they're-coming-to-town rock and roll band that sounds like Tarantino directing a Thin Lizzy video in the low desert, the band writes. So, they wanted them to change their name, did they? Well, um, keep in mind, you are allowed to do things like this as long as you are doing it for commentating purposes. I would like to instill that I am, in fact, doing this for commentating purposes, which now makes it legal. I'm going to play and otherwise promote Black Pussy all during the rest of this report just to anger these little C-words that want to tell me what they think I'm going to do. The name encapsulates exactly what they wanted. It also notes that the original Rolling Stone, Stone song contains an anti-racist message, and it does. So let's listen to them for a little bit. Very nice. They're being promoted in the face of third wave feminism on this show. I encourage you to support Black Pussy. It says on the band's Facebook profile, the band Black Pussy, which I promote, the band addresses the controversy surrounding their name. Black Pussy, remember the name by their records, by their t-shirts, by their posters and pins and hoodies, does not condone or endorse any sexism, nor do I. Racism, ageism, violence, or any other douchebaggery that has been spoiling the party since the party got started. If you are offended by the band's name, please refer to the following video, and if you go to the Daily Caller, there's a link to it. Well, the feminists managed to get Black Pussy Show in Raleigh, North Carolina shut down out of fear of violence for the promoter. So not only am I going to promote Black Pussy proudly during the Feminazi update, I'm just going to go ahead and let them play all the way into the next report, too. Just to piss them off. Guys, uh, news from the science front. Something I do on a regular basis as Black Pussy, who I support, plays in the background. Um, news from the science front. I've been getting a lot of science news lately. So I'm going to go ahead as Black Pussy plays and give you a little bit of science news before we get into our Putin update and close the show up with Ron Paul. Solar Eclipse Supermoon Spring Equinox. Friday, we'll see three rare celestial events. I mean, we're talking about like a day and a half here at 4.20 in the morning as we report. It says, uh, and this is interesting, before I get into exactly what it says, I want to point out, this is really interesting because it doesn't normally happen. Three things of celestial importance happening on the exact same day is, in fact, I would say, rather rare. Well, listen to this. Let me uh, scroll down here just a little bit as we listen to Black Pussy. As the eclipse plunges the UK and other places into darkness this Friday, two other rare, if less spectacular, celestial events will be taking place, too. A supermoon and a spring equinox. The supermoon, a perigee moon, happens when the full or new moon does its closest flyby to the Earth, making it look bigger than it normally does. And the spring equinox refers to the time of year when the day and night are of equal duration, midway between the longest and shortest days. Um, so you've got three major celestial events happening all at one time. So I think it's important that you, it, it, you pay attention, watch the skies, as they say in the thing, 
because there are a lot of big things going on in the heavens this Friday. It says a supermoon, most of the time they are between three and six supermoons a year. They are set to be six in 2015. So we're going to get to see these large moons. What causes it when the Earth is closer to the moon than you would normally expect, uh, than, than is commonplace, I should say. Solar eclipse, of course, refers to the phenomenon where the sun and moon line up so that the latter obscures the former. And while it won't be affected by the two other events, it is rare that the events happen even individually. And, of course, um, the spring equinox, the equinox will also happen on March 20th. While it won't have any discernible direct impact on how the solar eclipse looks, it will contribute a rare collision of the three unusual celestial events. Um, there you go, friends. That's that's not something that happens every day. We're going to go ahead and fade out uh, Black Pussy, who I think you should buy their CD, uh, fades away here. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. Go to YouTube, uh, Facebook.com and look up Mike McLaughlin. M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Laughlin. Laugh like the Joker. Um, oh, my God. He's, he, he hates women. No, he doesn't. Uh, what he does do is write amazing stories, and you can read them and purchase them and uh, let him know you heard about him from the correct views. That's a huge help to the show. It's a huge help to him, and I'm very, very proud to have an excellent writer as a sponsor of the show. We're going to go into our Putin update. Putin update uh, brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Would you like to have amazing stickers made for your band or your business or whatever it is you're trying to promote, perhaps a charity? Do you even have a rough idea what you would like it to look like? Take that rough idea to Sticker Junkie. Let David Lake know you heard about it from the correct views, and you've never seen better stickers than you will get from Sticker Junkie. RAF jets intercept Russian bomber off Cornwall uh, by Ben Farmer. For all of you that think that, uh, oh my God, Putin is a wonderful man because Putin hates Obama, so if Putin hates Obama stands to reason Putin's got to be a good man that's like saying because Stalin was fighting Hitler Stalin was a great man no Putin's terrible dying of thirst sorry two RAF typhoon fighters were scrambled on Wednesday evening to escort Russian long-range bombers flying off Cornwall the Ministry of Defense has said the Russian Tupolev TU-95 bombers, known as Bears, were picked up in international airspace in the northwest of Britain at around 6.30 p.m. and escorted as they were flown south, then turned around and flew north. Now, I understand that Obama has overstepped his bounds in the way that he has treated the Ukraine. However, that does not justify the actions that we are seeing from Putin, which could trigger an all-out nuclear extinction of the human race. It says, The interception of the barrels comes a fortnight after similar aircraft flew into the English Channel, prompting the government to demand an explanation from the Russian ambassador. They're lucky they didn't get Moscow nuked. Okay? It, it's, it's that clear, dude. I don't want to be ambiguous. David Cameron said Moscow appeared to be trying to make some sort of point. Yeah, they wanted to see if they could glow. I don't think we should dignify it with too much of a response, he said, because they're acting like animals, just like Obama. The Ministry of Defense in London said the typhoons had been scrambled from the RAF, Cornsbury, and Lincolnshire. A spokesman said RAF, that's the Royal Air Force for you Kesha fans, quick reaction alert typhoon fighter aircraft were launched yesterday after Russian aircraft were identified flying close to the UK airspace. The Russian planes were escorted by the RAF until they were out of the UK area of interest. At no time did the Russian military aircraft cross into UK sovereign airspace. So they want to taunt them. They want to see if they can get a nuclear missile to land in their front yard. And you know what? Putin is one of the lowest filth garbage human beings extant in world leadership today. And if you're someone that doesn't see that, then you're someone that's choosing to be blind just because you dislike Obama as much as I do, but you're still wrong. The Daily Sheeple, Russia is becoming awful comfortable with nuclear war. That would be the mass extinction event. 
make the dinosaurs happen again, only this time to us. After emerging from an 11-day disappearing act, many people think he has a terminal illness of some kind. Putin marked the occasion with several provocative moves. Yeah, that's one word for it. For starters, he ordered 40,000 troops in western and northern Russia to be on the full alert for the readiness exercise. Obviously, it's nothing of the sort. As is most militaries, the generals don't need permission to conduct training exercises. They probably, it says, do that on a regular basis. But if the orders come from the top, they take on a different meaning. In this case, the military on full alert is his way of letting the West know that he is in fact still in command after his mysterious hatus. Well, I mean, that's, that's the kind of behavior you would expect from a tyrant. Ask Pussy Riot. It says, uh, the news of this readiness exercise was quickly dwarfed by the public relations of what was going on behind the scenes last year when Russia annexed Crimea and Peninsula. Basically, what he said was he wasn't prepared to uh, bring nukes out. Listen to this. It says, Putin expanded on a previous admission of the well-armed forces in unmarked uniforms who took control of the Ukrainian military facilities near Crimea near Russian board soldiers. Putin's comments in a documentary being shown on state TV highlight the extent to which alarms spawned in Russia in the weeks following the Ukrainian president Viktor Yukyev's ouster in February of 2014 after months on street protests were violent. In the documentary, which marks a year since the referendum, Putin, the uh, new Stalin, says of the nuclear preparedness, we were ready to do this. Crimea is our historical territory. Russian people live there. They were in danger. We cannot abandon them. Look, the Ukraine, Putin, in case you don't know your history, is a sovereign nation dependent on of you. This is not the Soviet Union. I know you come from the KGB and I know that everybody in America wants to give you some kind of a green pass even though an Obama scum is tied to the CIA, which is just as bad as the KGB. Somehow they want to give you a pass. No. You are going to trigger a nuclear war and you are a piece of human filth and I hope when you die the maggots don't find you er worthy of eating! Uh, the Hill.com, Ron Paul, U.S. didn't really want to catch Osama bin Laden. Um, I think this has a lot of truth to it. I thought it needed to be covered. It was a little bit different than where the rest of the show had been going, but I think it's important. I do, and you're going to hear why. Uh, former rep uh, Representative Ron Paul of Texas says he thinks that the United States used Osama bin Laden as an excuse to build up its military and invade other countries. I agree. They knew where bin Laden was. I don't think that they really wanted to catch him because he was used as an excuse for us, you know, invading various countries and building up the military, Paul said to a radio interview with Scott Horton that BuzzFeed published Wednesday. Paul was explaining his mark and repraisal act following the September 01 attacks and suggested Congress take up a similar measure against the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria instead of passing... President Obama's broader authorization to use military force. Paul's bill would have authorized the president to issue letters to private individuals or groups to find and capture bin Laden and others responsible for the 9-11 attack, as well as provide a monetary bounty for the capture and information that may lead to their arrest. Well, that's what common sense would be now, wouldn't it? Paul argued that it's pretty hard to declare war against ISIS because it's not a government. So he was going to go ahead and get him captured in the uh, private sector, if you will. If you had a private force that was going to be paid to go over and get him, which would be Bin Laden, because they had pretty good knowledge of where he was and taking care of him early on, keep in mind he was on dialysis, just think of the benefits that would have come from a very, very narrowed approach to, you know, going after those people that were participating in 911, Paul said. So keep in mind, all of you that say that Ron Paul was just going to let Osama bin Laden get away with it. No, he wasn't. He had the best plan to solve it that nobody listened to that would have kept us out of the mess that we are in now. It says, Paul has caught headlines with other remarks regarding U.S. response to the Ebola and said that the situation in the Ukraine, amid moves of his son, Rand Paul, 
to launch a presidential bid, which, uh, again, I'm kind of hoping he does. It's definitely the, uh, the best that the Republicans have to offer since Napolitano and Justin Amish show no signs of running, or, uh, for that matter, Walter Williams. All three of them, I wish they would. And that brings us, friends, to the dumdy of the day. Visa says, we're all going to have internet-connected fridges in the future. Sometimes the stupidity is just so hard to read, friends, that it's almost hard for me not to just hang myself midway through the report, and this is one of them. Um, I hate Business Insider's website, by the way. They have the most dysfunctional, clunky site you've ever seen. Soon we're all going to be buying things with our fridge. That's what Jonathan Val from Visa says, at least. We met with Val, an executive director at Visa Europe during the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Your fridge will have a payment capability, he said. People are immediately ex associating Samsung Pay with the phone, but they're the biggest provider of white goods, and so I will say I have, I have a fridge, and I'm sure it will have connected payments to it. In other words, you can pay for your fridge by running your credit card through your fridge. And if you run out of, say, milk, you can order milk with your credit card in your fridge. And we all know that the frigid air is the most secure network transaction you can have. There's absolutely no chance that your fridge will mess this up. The stupidity hurts, people. The stupidity hurts. It's everywhere I look. It never ends. Day in, day out. Your fridge will have a payment capability. People, I read that. I'm, it's, I can't even read. I'm so shocked by it. Uh, we asked, Vo, whether having an internet-connected fridge in your kitchen integrated with your bank account is a security risk. It depends on what's sharing on the internet, he said. If I'm buying stuff through my fridge, it's probably going to be milk. If I suddenly start to order a MacBook Air from my fridge, then your fraud detection systems are probably going to start setting off the alarms. In other words, what this dumbass has just said is, if you buy milk with your credit card, the people that steal your identity aren't going to do anything to you because they must have this godly respect for milk. But if the same hackers see that you're buying a MacBook Air, then they will give up their worship of milk to steal your credit card information. That makes zero sense whatsoever to anybody with a brain that is more substantial than that of a mushroom stem. People have been talking about connected fridges for years. In fact, it's a running joke amongst attendees at tech conferences. A Tumblr blog, F-U-C-K, yeah, Internet Fridge, collects photos and mentions connected fridges. In closing, it says, in fact, here's a BBC News article in 99 that talked about it. There's a link to it. Friends, if you do that, you are dumber than a, you have a pumpkin for a head. How's that? Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange, doing some commentating here at The Media Speaks. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself at The Media Speaks. And you can donate to The Correct Views at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.